Okay, I'm back on the shore of Lake Superior here. And um, I have one question for you today. Hopefully you can hear me and you're not too distracted by the beautiful scenery. So the question is this. We are told in our reading from uh, Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar in his letter says that Daniel is filled with the spirit of the holy gods. The spirit of the holy gods is in him. Yesterday in Acts, we heard uh, Daniel, we heard Stephen finish his um, review of the history of the people of God, the Jews, by then accusing his accusers and saying, you are always resisting the Holy Spirit. Then they gnash their teeth at him, they become furious, and they stone him to death. And he becomes the first martyr uh, after the death of Jesus. So we hear also that they lay the cloaks at the feet of Saul, who consents to the death of Stephen. Saul is the authority on premises. He is one of the Pharisees. And he later, of course, becomes Paul. He is known as Paul, and he becomes St. Paul. So St. Paul is present and approves of the execution of Stephen, who has just accused his accusers of always resisting the Holy Spirit. In John 14, Jesus talks quite a bit about the Holy Spirit. So my question for you is this. What does it mean to resist the Holy Spirit? And give me some examples. You can use scripture. There's examples right there in Acts chapter 7. But remember, the Holy Spirit apparently isn't just a Christian thing, because even Nebuchadnezzar, the pagan king of Babylon, recognizes the spirit of the holy gods in Daniel. And Jesus talks about the comforter, the paraclete, and so forth, who will come after he, Jesus, leaves. But what does it mean? Maybe we can try to figure out who the Holy Spirit is by trying to figure out what it means to resist him. Well, that's my question in particular. Think about that, both from Scripture and in your lives. What does it mean to resist the Holy Spirit?